Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Ambition to Impact podcast. Today, I have a very special guest. I've brought on Maria Macklin from House of Color. Maria is an image consultant. And one of the really big questions I wanted to ask today is how much or how important is image in especially a digital world to help us be at our most productive, to help make an impact and to help us in our careers? So hello, Maria. Thank you for joining us. Hi, Alex. Well, nice to be here. So could you give us a bit of a background about you and, and what exactly is an image consultant? Okay, my, my purpose is that I help people connect who they are on the inside to how they show up on the outside. And when those two are aligned, the people who meet them perceive them in the right way. So you're not trying to be something you aren't. You always will be authentic. You will always be consistent. And when you walk into a room, people understand what, what they're going to get. It's like a, a packaging on, a, on a, your favorite brand. Think about your favorite brand. And you know when you see the packaging, you know what you're going to get. You know what the quality is going to be. You know that it's going to be reliable because you get what you got the last time. When we package ourselves consistently, we are like a brand. We're like people can, can rely on us. When we change that or when we turn up with something we're not, then people see through that very quickly and the authenticity is lost. It's interesting you say that. So were we talking about personal brands in terms of that label? Is that what we call it? Uh, yes, yeah, some yes, we call it personal brand. And you know, branding has a very long history. Branding started out when when farmers grazed their cattle on common land, they're now called commons. Um, and they had to distinguish their cattle from other people's cattle. So they branded their cattle or their livestock. And that was where branding started. And then we moved into company brands where values were picked and put upon a company. So a company would decide we're going to be the best automotive company and we're going to be sleek and we're going to be powerful and we're going to be safe. And then we moved into personal brand. And personal brand is you can't take words and slap them on yourself. You've got to develop and discover what is there because your personal brand is already there but not everybody understands what that is um, and so when we work with people when I work with people we uncover and we unwrap what that is what you stand for how you show up and what are the values that are core to you that you want other people to get very quickly when you understand that and you show up as that you can build trust much more quickly you have to you don't have to work as hard and neither does your audience, whether it's a single audience or a, a group of people. They don't have to work as hard to understand who you are and where you're coming from. It's very powerful when, when it's aligned, when everything is aligned. Do you know, that's it. it's really interesting as well, because uh, a lot of our listeners are in very technical fields. So accounting, finance, tech, banking, um, insurance, and these quite... Uh, almost as soon as I say that, I think of blue, of course, because this is a quite a strong color in those areas. But what we've seen over the last few years is this emergence of, I'm, I'm going to say fintech, I'm going to go there, and, and modern technology, SaaS companies. Um, and there is a very, very clear image. And, and actually, I know a few of my clients actually struggle with this because it's a case of how smart do I go in terms of who am I representing? Am I re representing me? Am I re representing the brand of my organization or the company that I'm with? Oh, there are so many questions to get right. Where do we even start when it comes to trying to figure this out? You start with you. You have to start with you. If you don't show up authentically to you, then you know, you, you're never going to get it right. You, you do have to consider your company brand, what your company stands for. And if they have provided you with guidelines, you need to do that. Um, guidelines on how to show up are becoming less and less common. People are leaving you to your own devices. So for some people, that leaves life a little bit harder because there's more stress attached to that. For other people, it's liberated them from being in a corporate uniform. And, and so they're being allowed to put their personality into their clothes a lot more. So there are advantages and disadvantages at the moment. My, um, my guideline or my advice is always when you're talking about smart casual, to focus on the smart 
Uh, you can be relaxed, smart. You should never go into shabby or sloppy. You should never look undergroomed. You should always show up with your client in mind. How are they going to perceive you? What are the words that you want to leave them with when you've left the room? And, and those words might only be four. So, so my, my key words are neat, um, edgy, structured. I like to be structured um, and modern. And I don't, and, and those are the words that I tend to use to show up with all the time, because no matter where I am, those are the words that apply to me. And I like that. It, it take, took me a long time to get there, but there are, there are words that apply to different people, which is why we don't, we're not all the same. We have, you have to show up as you first. I really like that. Um, I haven't, I've never thought about words, um, but I feel like I've got almost like an unspoken theme to how I show up. So people know it's me. Like um, uh, I'll always wear lipstick. I'll always wear a bright color lipstick, either a pink or a red. Um, and to be honest, that's more about how I feel, I think. Like it's my, uh, it's I don't know, like my, yeah, I'm getting, I'm ready. You know, it's, I think, especially because um, when I used to work in theatre and film and performance, uh, you know, you get your, your kind of war paint on yeah. <laughs> and get ready. And that was like, right, we are prepared. We are ready. Like everything's set for the day. And you're There's a huge psychology like, behind that. So let me come back to that. Yeah. Oh, really? What is yeah. it? Well, you finish what you're going to say first, if you like. Well, and then I'll I was going to say bright colours because I'm, I'm, you know, in terms of impact is a big word for me and and that. And for me, uh, it is, I mean, even for, for those of you who will be watching this at some point on video, um, you know, I have cut bright colours in my background. I'm very uncharacteristically uh, wearing a pattern today. But again, it was a pattern I was drawn to because it's got quite bold um and graphic colors I would I never wear I, I don't you know it's I tend to just wear bold colors as in no no print so for me it's quite a uncharacteristic what am I trying to say characteristic uncharacteristically me um but so what I have struggled with though sometimes is that balance between um casual and smart casual and I know um I was saying a few of my clients actually as well with this because I work with fintech. So, for instance, I'll go to um, a conference and I have to say it's been quite a relief the, in the last few years to be able to um, legitimately wear sneakers <laughs> or trainers. But I now have my work trainers that are, you know, very smart, um, very, very cool, very edgy, but I, would never, I wouldn't wear them out, you know, to walk around the park or something like that. They are for work purposes only, um, mm. so that they stay as clean as possible and 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 smart and you know not scuffed or anything. They're not for running or anything like that. Um, and and I'll wear them probably you know with smart trousers or jeans, and but only for a specific type of client. And usually that is a SaaS company or a fintech one. Um, however, now this is a funny thing. So I went to a panel event a few years ago. Um, and, and I actually was meeting someone beforehand. I dressed up in a bright red dress, nice pencil cut, very smart, elegant, um, and stiletto heels, which is what I used to wear a lot of the time. And I turned up and everyone was in ripped jeans and t-shirts and blazers. And I felt so out of place. And I think I was more aware of the fact that I just felt like I stuck out and not in a great way. Yes. Um, like I didn't fit in. Yeah, you were and overdressed. Yeah. yeah, I felt really self-conscious, <clears throat> really self-conscious. And um, it wasn't long after that, that then I was invited to another event, which was a, a fundraiser. It was, um, it was, it was with a banking company and finance company. And so I thought, okay, we'll go a bit mixed. So I put black jeans on, uh, a nice top and boots and I got there and everyone was in like three-piece <laughs> suits and beautiful dresses and I was thinking oh no <laughs> I've really not hit the mark again so um, I suppose my question is is how do we find that balance of bringing who we are um, and fitting in 
And then I'd love to hear about the psychology element that you were just talking about. Well, I, I, I always ask three questions before I go anywhere. Who's going to be there? So what's your audience? Mm-hmm. Whether it's a picnic or a corporate event, who's going to be there? What's the weather going to be doing? Because there's no point turning up, you know, in stilettos if, it's, if you're going to be walking across a, a lawn. Um, and, and what's the environment I'm in? And how do you how do you want people to leave? What do you want what do you want your image to say about you when you walk into a room? Your personal brand. This is a Jeff Bezos quote. Your personal brand is what people say about you when you've left the room. So what do you want to leave behind? Now I agree that you you need to have impact. So people need to see you, particularly women. Women tend to be less visible than men. I really work hard with my female clients to make them understand that they need to have impact and they need to have visibility. And often they need to exaggerate that slightly when they're in a room full of men so that they can be seen. If they're not seen, they'll not be heard. If they're not heard, they'll not be valued. So being visible is really important. So for me, for women particularly, I ask them to wear some impact color, which is exactly what you've just talked about. And it's the pinks, the reds, oranges, yellows, highly visual colors, the colors we see first when we walk into a room. That's, 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 and that's very, very important, particularly for women. Um, The smart casual piece, it's very easy to up what you're wearing or to reduce. I mean, if you had changed your stilettos for trainers, you probably would have felt an awful lot more comfortable in that situation just by changing one thing. Similarly, if you change a puffer jacket for a blazer, you can change one item and you can immediately elevate what you're wearing into something different. And so it's often a good idea to have a couple of pieces in your car or in your bag, as long as they don't look too, you know, like you're carrying luggage everywhere, that you can quickly elevate your look, add a necklace, add your earrings, put on your lipstick. Or similarly, remove your necklace, you know, casual, make everything a bit more casual. For a man, it's as simple as putting on a jacket, buttoning up the shirt and, and adding a tie or not even. The opposite is true. If you ever watched Barack Obama, he moved from formal to casual really quickly, but he never changed his clothes. All he ever did was he took off his jacket, he op- took off his tie, opened a shirt button or two and rolled up his sleeves. And you could see he visibly relaxed and the people around him visibly relaxed. And the smiles appeared. And it's amazing when you do that, the, the action you give out gives back the same. You know, to every action there's an equal and opposite reaction. That happens. If you give out a relaxed appearance, you will get relaxed back, mm-hmm. um, if you know what I mean. But if you become a bit more formal, people will tend to behave more formally around you. So um, I always say, check those three things before you go. Ask what the dress code is. Find out how people did it the last time they were at a similar event. Always ask. There's no harm in asking. Or look at the company website and see what the photographs show. What did people show? Or spy. You know, go to, they'll go to the company. Watch them walking into work before you turn up for an interview. Watch the people walking in and see what they're wearing. That's what I, that's what I would suggest. It's really, it's really uncomfortable. It knocks your confidence big time when you're either overdressed or underdressed. It's, it's, it's horrible. <laughs> And I, so I, I suppose the the feeling is is that you're just not fitting in, or you're not you don't belong. It's that that was the I know for me that was the overwhelming feeling of oh I I don't belong here. I yeah. look like an outcast outsider. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and um, that's horrible. It's horrible to feel excluded or to ex- have excluded yourself, not on purpose, but that's a horrible feeling. Well, it's funny, isn't it? Because in a way, we've both just said but you do actually need to stand out to make an impact. You do. Um, so there's wanting to belong, but there's also then standing out. So okay, there's having an impact and there's, and there's being distracting. So often if the clothes walk into the room before the person, then the clothes are doing all the talking, then you won't hear the person. So clothes should never be distracting. Clothes should always enhance what's going on on your face or in your head and shoulders. You know, so if you're ever listening to the news or watching the weather and you actually haven't heard what the person would say, you go to the end of the bulletin and you think, I don't know what the headlines were because the clothes have been so distracting 
you haven't been able to focus on the message. So it's really important that the clothes aren't so distracting that you can't focus on the message. And that's often what you see when you see the column inches in the newspaper when people are criticizing what somebody has worn. They actually haven't heard what that person within that room to say because the clothes have done all the talking. And it's so unfair, isn't it? It's, it's, it's oh, a, completely. such a horrible it's judgmental unfair. space. Yes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We do yeah. it. We all do it. And that's back to your your other question, which was about you know, your first impressions, we judge whether we like it or not. We are primed, our brain has been primed to judge since we were cavemen because you had to very quickly figure out whether somebody was a friend or a foe. And that's what you're doing. So first impressions count and people will say, oh, I don't judge. But we do. We do. I mean, I, I remember listening to Deborah Mead and I think it was on Graham Norton and she said she has to very consciously make an effort not to judge based on the appearance. And she has to stop herself. And she find, she has had to practice that over time so that she can hear what they have to say first before she makes any, you know, assumptions about people. And that's very hard to do. Very hard to do. That is, oh, do you know what? That's so right. And especially, as, of course, uh, so many of us know Deborah Meaden from Dragon's Den mm. and where you get a few moments. And I've, I've worked with entrepreneurs who are pitching for investment. And um, especially with technology, then you get some, you know, a CTO who is, who is, you know, actually they've been in either a lab or working on software, you know, the classic kind of Mark Zuckerberg's or, um, uh, oh, yeah. now I'm trying to think, Steve Wozniak's. Um, who were usually the ones locked up in front of a computer somewhere <laughs> rather than the front man. But they do have to come out and be able to make an impression because you're actually asking for people's money and yes. trust and yes. um, and faith and belief yes. uh, in terms of your concept and what you've Which developed. is why financial people, people who work in finance, tend to be the most formal because when you're more formal, you build people's trust. If you had a policeman stop you in the street and he was wearing a hoodie and tracksuit bottoms, I mean, there's just no hope in high heaven that you're ever going to respond to that person or have respect. You're just not because the uniform and the authority isn't there. When you have somebody in uniform or in a suit and tie or in a jacket and shirt, you will listen to that person more quickly. And the psychology is that when, when a when you go into a room full of people and somebody is dressed more formally than the others, all the decisions will be deferred to that person if you don't know the seniority of the people in that room. Because they look like they know what they're talking about. They look the most senior. Whether they are or not, it's irrelevant. Based on a first impression, that's what we do. Wow. So very much the psychology is very much like the prince and the pauper, you know, the swapping the dress clothes um, over Completely. and you're just gonna we're just gonna make assumptions and, and yes yeah as you say there's a balance between then making making that first initial snap uh assessment and then as De as you were saying with Deborah Mead did it's really then working hard as for you to really look at other people and go beyond that then so it's just opening the door would you say that's right yes but I like my clients to take control of those assumptions so they're not left to chance I really, you don't that. want to leave those to chance because then you have to work really, really hard. If you make a negative first impression with somebody, you have to have eight positive relationships or eight positive things with that person in order to get back to a starting point. So you have to work really, really hard. What I would like my clients to do is have made the really good first impression so that they're already, they're already on, on, on you know, they're already away, they're, they're running. If, you know they don't have to do that groundwork because it's already done based on what they look like so, so we were mentioning earlier about the lipstick um, yes. <laughs> and was that a color psychology that you're about to share or oh there's a there's a whole history towards about the the, the details we add to our clothes and there's a history about dressing for your station, dressing above your station, dressing below your station. And it all goes, it goes way back to medieval times. If you ever read Canterbury Tales, they, um, the merchant dressed rich so that people understood, assumed that he was doing well when he wasn't. So he added mink and ermine. There are details that we add to our clothes which make 
us look like we are more important in inverted commas than we are, or look like we know more than we do often. You can become, you can be perceived as being more credible. Um, and those are all, and, and one of those details is lipstick, earrings, a necklace, a tie, lapels on your jacket, shirt on your collar in your shirt, um, buttons even, uh, your watch, your bracelet, your rings, your cufflinks, all of those little details elevate your look and you look like you're dressing above your station. The more of those details you have on, it goes way back, way back. And there was a law in the medieval times called sumptuary law, sumptuary code, which disallowed you. You weren't allowed to dress above your station because if you did, you were fined. So, oh, wow. I did. Yeah, and you, were, and you were fined quite heavily. And we're, while we're not fined today, you know, there isn't a lord of the sumptuaries going around saying you're above your station, you're above your station. But if you were dressing above your rank in society, you were fined. However, we are often fined if we, if somebody, if we make the wrong impression, if we don't get the deal, if we don't get the client, if we don't get the bank loan, whatever it is we're trying to do. Um, you know, we are still fined and or we don't get the date based on sometimes how we show up. So and 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 the psychology of lipstick is that it it frames what you say. You will perceive, you will be perceived to be more credible and competent and trustworthy when you're wearing it than when you're not. Wow, I'm definitely never gonna let lose <laughs> my <laughs> lipstick again. And I love that you said in terms of like so for those of you listening on the podcast later on, uh, Maria's almost described what I'm wearing. I've got lipstick on, I've got earrings, <laughs> I've got a necklace on, uh, I've got my watch on. Um, I never, I, I've, I used to really love wearing bracelets but because I'm usually recording, they jangle. The jangle, um, yeah. So I sadly, I, I haven't worn bracelets in ages, um, which I really enjoyed wearing before. But uh, so it's really funny. It's, it's all of these things do really add up and I mean there's a reason why we wear jewelry and a reason why we we have all of these designs and sometimes I think we don't we forget what emphasis they have and very 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 subtle you don't have to go overboard with them yeah. um, a watch for example the, the message you're sending out when you're wearing a watch is that I value your time oh wow Really yeah. powerful, but so I but it's a very simple thing to do. Put on your watch. I mean, so half the time my watch doesn't even work. I never, I can't see it because I because I need to wear glasses, so I can't see it. But but I always put it on. Your belt um, protects your gut. It's where you carry your ammunition, and so you know a belt is. If you don't have your belt on, you're going in without your without your armory, without your armor, and sometimes your jacket is your coat of armor. So you're going in unprotected if you don't have those pieces on. Very, very subtle. But the psychology, when we show people photographs of men or women with all their details on and without, the, the research will bring back that people with their details will be deemed to be more trustworthy, more credible, more competent, more flexible, more successful. And, and you're not, you know, they don't have to be rich things. You don't have to be... be uh, rich to add all of those details you know they're just you just need to put them on it's very very simple very simple way to up and upgrade and elevate how you how you're perceived really it's 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 this is all so fascinating and there's so many things that I want to delve into and I have so many questions now <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just aware of what the time is so we're gonna have to maybe I'll, I'll go back because I'm, I'm my mind is buzzing with all sorts of things okay think- one more piece of psychology is that your brain reacts to how you show up also so if you show up I mean this was really apparent when we ever whenever we started working from home they were going to work in their pajamas when you dress with intent, your brain will be more intentional on your day than when you don't. And that actually is a perfect way to segue to the, the last question that I really wanted to ask you, which is um, at the time of recording, this is going out in uh, June 2021. And well, we're obviously, well, hopefully we're on the edge of coming out of the pandemic. But what I should probably say is we're coming out of another lockdown we're very much still virtual we're starting to have meetings together and we've been talking about meeting up with people I mean obviously we are speaking over um, the cameras and computers and audio so what should we be thinking of because I have to admit I have struggled with this 
I was saying earlier, I like to wear bright colors. I I got quite well known. I had I had a, a conference organizer who um, always knew that I'd usually t- turn up in brightly colored trousers or culottes um, and usually a, a dark top of some sort. And of course, that has not helped me in a virtual world. <laughs> because no, you need no to one... switch that around, don't yeah. you? And I had to really look at my wardrobe and go, oh my gosh, I've got all these dark and white tops and I've got a white background, so otherwise I just blend in. Um, so what should we be thinking about in, a vir- in virtual meetings? And because this has opened us up globally and we are speaking, this is not going away. We are going to have more meetings like this, hybrid events, conferences, um, really important meetings where we need to show up. Now, I often speak about in terms of the the framing and the video and the lighting and things like that. But what about what we're wearing and how we're showing up? Well, we we call it above the keyboard dressing. So you and you are a postage stamp size on somebody else's computer. So you really need to make it work. Um, I opted for neutral today, um, but normally I would go for one of my reds, one of my oranges, one of my yellows. And if it's a very formal event, I would put a jacket on as well. Um, and, and it's back to the detail that we talked about when we were, when we were talking about something you know, The more details you can add above the, above the camera, above the keyboard, the better. The more authority you have and the more impact you have and the more you will be seen. I need people to be visible. You need to be visible. So you're right. The brighter colors... Be careful that you don't overdo it because when we go into too much color, we, 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 we're perceived as clownish because clowns wear lots and lots of bright colors. So you, you might need to balance it with some neutral. So if you're wearing a bright top and it's a very formal event, put on a neutral color jacket, um, but have some impact somewhere. I usually up the vibrancy of my lipsticks. Back to the lipstick point, I, I always wear earrings. Check your glasses fit in with you and your personality because they're big, they frame your face. Um, so yeah, just make sure that from the shoulders, your your chest up is visible and impactful. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for sharing this, um, guys. I hope you found this as interesting as I have, because uh, especially from the historic point of view of what we've built in, and I, I, you know, I was thinking about in terms of then cultures and bringing in uh, our, our different. Um, our backgrounds and cultures and ethnicities. I know, I know a couple of amazing women um, with African heritage, and they wear these incredible prints colors. and colors. And it's so wonderful. And also because I, I work, um, I work a lot with, uh, let's say, an African theatre show um, in the West End as well. So I know a lot about the history of um, different tribes and patterns. And how Im- and the relevance of that because it hasn't mm. it really is an identity uh, mm. of of ha- and and bringing that all together is I f- I feel a really wonderful thing. Um, so maybe that's a different conversation for later. So, what would you say three key points are then to take away from this to really get the best out of ourselves? Be authentic. Mm-hmm. Be true to you. If you show up. In somebody else's clothes, dressed as somebody, something you're not, you, people will see through that very quickly. That's the very first thing. So understand how you connect your personality to what you wear on the outside. Um, be visible. Number two, it's a very important, particularly for women, very important, because with that, you will get the confidence to stand up and be heard. So um, be authentic, be visible. Be valued. Value you. If you value you, that you can, that you deserve the good, the good stuff that you deserve to show up well, then you will get that value back. Incredible. Where can we find out more about you? And uh, yeah, where do we find you? Well, House of Colour is a franchise that's based in the UK. I'm in I'm in Ireland, so I'm the Irish consultant, but we have consultants all over the UK. So if you go to houseofcolour.co.uk. Put in your postcode, you will find your closest consultant. Um, it's a hugely worthy, I mean, I would say that because I work there, but it's a hugely worthy investment. You will find it transformational, you will find it empowering, and you have no idea where it will bring you. Brilliant. And uh, and just for anyone outside of the UK as well, is that... Same thing, thing houseofcolor.com. There, we have consultants across the world. Uh, a lot of them in the US. We have a big business in the USA. 
Um, but you'll find them pretty much everywhere. And if you don't get in touch with me, Maria Matten, and I will find one for you. We Lovely. do a lot of styling. Vir- we do a lot of virtual. We, the color, if you, you see the color read behind me, for those of you in the podcast, you won't. But color analysis, we don't do online because you can't do it accurately. But we do do all of the other. We, we understand your personality. We can do all of that piece virtually. Oh, and that must be, that would be, so, do you know what, that sounds amazing because sometimes I, I stand in front of my wardrobe and I think, I, I'm just going to be like Steve Jobs, you know, I'm just going to have, have the same yes. outfit every day and I can yes. see why that can make you so much more efficient. But, uh, um, but to have, to have at least clear guidelines or a sense because uh, I'm, yeah, it, sometimes it comes naturally. Sometimes it's just something that you need um extra help with especially if you're not if you've got to think about other things as well so everyone do find maria she's on linkedin as well so um it's maria macklin and i'll put the details in the show notes for you so that you've got them there um thank you so much for joining us today 